Hello everyone, welcome back to the forge. Now, we're going to take this Nicholson file right here. Uh, I had a friend of mine that gave me several of these. And we're going to forge it into a Wakazashi. Uh, Wakazashis tend to have a blade length between 18 and 24 inches, so I think that we should be able to get that out of there uh, with no problem. So, the first thing we're going to do is jump on the broad back in there. We're going to grind all these teeth off on the sides and on the edge here. So we're not hammering in cold shuts everywhere. Uh, from what I understand, Nicholson files are pretty close to 1095, or they are 1095. So hopefully when we get this forged out, get it cleaned up and ready for heat treat, maybe we can get it, get a hamon. So let's go ahead and get after it. All right, I have a wore out 36 grit belt on here. Uh, this file is still hardened, so there is no reason to run a new belt trying to grind the, the edges and all that stuff off of it. So I keep an abundance of these on hand for the sole purpose of doing that. So let's get it ground off.
There's where we are so far. At the beginning of the video, I made mention that Wakazashi's were 18 to 24 inches for the blade, and I was mistaken with that. It's actually 12 to 24 inches. We're looking here like we're about in the 16 and a half and 16 and three quarter inch blade length, which is perfectly fine. It's pretty much exactly where I want it to be. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that it's turning out so far. So once this cools down completely, we get done the grinder. We'll get it cleaned up. Another little thing to throw out there to all of you Katana, Wakazashi, Japanese blade purists is obviously this is not what you're going to classify as a real Wakazashi or Katana. And to that, I say this is an artistic interpretation. Nowhere does it say that I'm making a real ancient Japanese sword. It's inspired by those. I love uh, the history of the katana, wakazashi, tanto, and the samurai in general, and ancient Japanese history, and it inspires me to create works of art, and and makes me be a better smith by looking and studying the older swords and knives. So with that being said, obviously this is not made of tamahagane, but it still should turn out pretty cool. So once it cools down, we're going to get it on the grinder, get all the scale cleaned off, get everything roughed in. Then we'll get ready for heat treat. All right, I've got our Wakazashi clamped up in the vise. I've got some blue docking layout fluid here on the spine because even though I have a, a, a belt grinder in there, it I don't have a large enough wheel to actually get a good enough contour on this. And you can feel the little humps and bumps in it. So I'm going to get a file and I'm going to come in here and work this and smooth this out the best that I can. And then we'll move on to addressing a few other things.
All right, I got the curve filed in real good. Of course, there'll still be some cleanup after heat treat and everything we'll do to it. Um, but I did, as I was working, I did notice that there was a little bit of a wave in the edge, and so I threw it back in the forge and got it straightened out really good. We're gonna take it to the uh, surface of the granite surface plate, put some diacom on this, and give ourselves some scribe lines so we can go ahead and rough in our bevels, and then we should be ready to move on to heat treat. So let's get on it. All right, got everything cleaned up. I did thermal cycle this three times to help refine the grain structure. Uh, that is a very important step to remember knife making to always do uh, before heat treat. I have some furnace cement that I'm going to put on here and hopefully we'll be able to get a hamon out of it. So let's get this clamped in and see what we can do. All right, so our furnace cement has dried out. It's taken about three days due to the humidity here, uh, but it's dried out nicely. You can also put this on and put it in an oven, let it cure out. Uh, I think it's 400 degrees. It'll dry it out pretty well, but you definitely want it completely dry before quenching it because if it's still wet, it'll actually release and won't really give you the look that, that you're going for which this may be an epic failure as well. We're about to find out. So I got the forge getting up the temperature. Let's get it in there. I've already thermal cycled this blade. So as soon as we get the temperature, we're gonna quench it and then move on from there. All right, so our quench went well. We did take a little bit of a warp, which I was able to get out with uh, shimming it during the second tempering cycle. Uh, so, so far, so good. I'm gonna go in the grinding room, get this all cleaned up and finished up. And I'll catch you in a minute. Now today we're going to jump back in on our Wakazashi build. As you can tell, I've already started hand sanding. And uh, if you check the community tab out, you already know that it did take a really nice hamon. You may be able to see that. Let's get it up here to the camera. Maybe you can see a little better. Yeah, you can see it in there pretty good. It's lying right along here. So our furnace cement did work. It did its job. I couldn't resist throwing it in for a test etch the other day. Just had to. Um, with that being said though, we've got a long way to go on hand sanding this, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in on hand sanding, and when I catch you in a minute, all the hand sanding will be done, and we'll start discussing all the fittings. So let's get to work. All right, got our blade all sanded up. It's at about a 400 grit. I will go back and clean it up even more because it's bound to get dings and scratches as we work on these parts. Uh, but we're gonna turn our attention to the habaki first. And for that, I have these old fittings. They're just copper fittings I have laying around. And I have these couple of pieces here that I've had here forever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these up I will anneal them and then hammer them out and what we want is to find a piece that matches our thickness right here at the shoulder and then we'll use that to make the habaki and then we'll solder it together and move on. Alright, so let's get on.
All right, something to remember while doing this is anneal this as much as you need to. You know, don't try to cut any corners and just start hammering away on it because if it starts feeling stiff under the hammer, you're more than likely fixing to crack it or break it. So, like I said, always stop, anneal it. If you have a torch, use it to anneal it. However you're working on it, keep it soft. We're almost ready to solder this together. All right, I'm fixing to go in here and cut this off. You can see my line I've scribed right there between my fingers. That's where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off on out here and then I'll solder it together and then we'll come in and clean it up. I like having a little extra in case I mess something up. You know, I got a lot of cleanup work to do on this so I don't wanna think I've got something nice and then grind it in and find out there's nothing in there. So let's get it cut off. All right, got both of our SEPA fit up. Now our SUBA will go in between these. And so I've got to get this heated up. This is a half pound of copper. Get it heated up in the forge and kneel it and then flatten it down because right now it's way too thick. And then we'll get it slotted and fit up. And then we'll turn our attention to the handle. All right, 
so here's our piece of copper. I annealed it in the forge and then used the press to flatten it out and then finish flattening it out by hand. I have already applied the docking layout fluid to this side and scribed some rough center lines. Since the edges aren't perfectly square, just had to kind of eyeball it, but it looks good enough. And if you notice, there's some little lines right here. What those are for is I actually came in here with my drill bit and I started on the ends and laid the drill bit out and marked and then just did one on each side until I got the center area here. I got that from Kyle Royer. It just kind of helps lay out so you're not drilling here and then randomly over here. It just helps lay everything out and you can actually get as many holes as you can in here neatly and cleanly without any guesswork. I will drill here and here and then here and here and then we'll just mill out this center section here and clean all the corners up. Alright, so let's go ahead and get an end mill found, get it chucked up and get to work. All right, so this is where we are. Everything's roughed up. I'm fixing to turn my attention in a moment to the Suba and start figuring out the design that I want to go with on that. Uh, the way things stand right now with the handle on here, this handle would extend to right here through my hand completely. And I mean, that would be pretty good. I just am really not liking the shortness of this tank. Uh, I think that I'm going to go ahead and weld on a couple of inch extension. I probably should have left the tail on the file when I forged this. I was focusing more on the blade than the tang. The tail would have gave me just enough to get that extra little bit. Uh, so you live, you learn. But like I was saying, I will probably go ahead and grind the chamfer around this and make a piece of steel that fits it perfectly and then fill it up with weld. Get it welded up good and nice. Uh, get it all cleaned up. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and move on to looking at the Suba. All right, from what I've read, the most common Wakazashi handle length was 8.7 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do mine at 9 inches. All right, now to discuss the elephant in the room. Now, I want to handle this 9 inches. Nine inches and so we look at this and we can already tell that the tang is going to be way too short uh, once you throw in the spacers and the guard and the whole nine yards and then i've got to add another spacer here and then of course we're going to have the piece on the end i ideally would prefer for this tang to be at least three quarters of the way three quarters length but these files are a lot like 1095 i had a lot, lot of extra 1095 laying around so i'm going to weld an extension on and so I will extend it out to about three quarters of an inch or three quarters of the way of the handle here. I feel a whole lot better with that already.
All right. There is our extension welded on. Tried to keep it with the flow of the blade as possible, as much as possible. All right, let's go ahead and move on to working on the handle. All right, <clears throat> I've already sketched out the tang portion of our wakazashi onto this piece of wood and I've used a red sharpie, but I'm gonna go back over it with a pencil. Uh, because I want the lines to be a little bit smaller and I'll be taking this over to my milling machine and milling it out. I don't have the woodworking chisels and everything else. This way is just quicker. Once I get this piece milled out, we'll get them glued up and let them set up and start getting ready to shape them up. Then we can start shaping our sepa here and move on to our uh, other pieces of the sword. both of our sides slotted out got a pretty equal amount out of each side a little more on one than the other that's fine already checked it on the tang fits up good so now we're going to glue this together and move on to the next step All right, so the glue is set up nice on the handle. So let's go over here to the grinder and get this ground down so we can move on to some other things. All right, now that our handle's shaped, we can move on to getting our sepa here ground down to match up with the handle then we can address our guard and then we can move on to doing the other pieces of the fittings that we need and not too far off from wrapping this handle up and then giving it the proper wrap and being done let's move on All right, I've got all of our fittings here shaped. I'm gonna go ahead and take a pencil and I'm gonna draw around this piece here. Then I'm gonna go in there and I've got a little texturing tool and we're gonna texture this guard. All right, I don't want the texture underneath that because if I do, it's liable to make some gapping that I don't think will look very good, so. All right, let's go out here and start hammering. All right, so this is what I'm going to be using here. Uh, somebody has taken and ground some little balls on the end of this. Uh, looks like they've actually brazed a couple on. Uh, these were given to me by a, a friend of mine. Uh, they were in his dad's old stuff. And I think they was initially used for leather work, but I've played around with some annealed copper and it gives it a nice hammered texture that I can kind of control without being all over the place. So let's go ahead and give them a go.
All right, here's the piece. If it'll come into focus. Here's the piece that I've been around the top of the handle. I believe this is called the Fuchi. Um, I'm fixing to put it here on my granite block and take my height gauge because it's, it's pretty uneven because you know it was rough cut. And I'm going to scribe around because I know that one side is the factory edge and one side is not. And I tried to keep that factory edge as close as I could uh, to one another. It's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead. I've colored it with red Sharpie. I'm going to use my height gauge here, find the lowest point on this, and then scribe the same height all the way around. You can see it right there. So I'm going to go over the grinder and grind that off. And then we'll set it on the handle and see how she looks. All right, nice snug fit. That's what I wanted. I'm going to push it down a little bit more. And then i got to grind this even up here at the top. And we'll be in pretty good shape. All right, we've got all of our fittings. Everything's good and tight. We're going to turn our attention to the Kashira down here. All right, I got a Kashira done. There we go. There we go. It's in place. It's nice and snug. All right, the way that I did it. For you, those of you that may be wondering, is I took some more pieces of the of the fittings I had, and I just ground the notch in around, much like I did at the Fushi up here, and you know just rounded it around to fit the handle. And then I took a piece of this flat copper, made sure both surfaces were good and clean, laid the ring on there, fluxed it real well uh, with flux paste, cut off little pieces of solder dropped it inside of the ring and then used a piece of the solder to solder where the, the ring went together uh, and then heated from the bottom and of course all the solder melted affixing the ring to the flat piece and I soldered the gap. It's not perfect. I'm getting better. whole point of this project is to learn as I go uh, but it'll work. So now I'm going to move on to right here on this handle get the focus back in again. So now I'm going to move on to cutting the notches here on the end uh, that will go all the way through where uh, we'll wrap the handle wrapping and tie it off in the knot. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those out. I will probably be cutting those with the rotary carver because this copper is still pretty soft and I'm thinking when I go to drill through it it's going to bend. I don't really want it to bend. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that and I'll catch you in a minute. All right, I got the slots in here. This is where the handle wrapping will pass back and forth as we wrap the handle. And now I've got to cut the notch in the top of our wood here on the handle. I've already drilled the holes, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out.
Here she is. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Not too bad for an old Nicholson file and some plumbing fittings and some scrap. I appreciate you for watching. Uh, if you would hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell to be notified when this content as it posts. Uh, if you're into blacksmithing and want some really cool things to work on, head over to blacksmithingblanks.com. Use the coupon code MATT and you'll save 10% on your purchases. They have everything from preformed hooks to guillotine tools and a lot of other cool stuff. With that being said, I appreciate you all. You have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.